Times are tough, and right now those in the commercial world know that being heard via advertisements is the name of the game. AmpSquare.tv understands how important advertisement is and is proud to express that it's truly the only plugged-in internet television production company on the market. Amp2.tv live streams all their shows across all the major selling markets in the U.S. and abroad. Call them at 866-224-5422. The AmpSquare.tv library allows productions to be seen over and over again, making commercial platforms more usable. Call 866-224-5422. Toll free 866-224-5422. Amp2.tv. The first and only internet television network that's truly plugged in. 866-224-5422. That's A-M-P, the number two, dot TV. Afraid of needles? Anxious about going under the knife? Do the words invasive surgery make you queasy to think about? After years of being mistaken for someone in her 20s, Alicia Curry, a mom of three in her late 40s, finally got tired of hearing you should write a book about why you look so young. So that's exactly what she did. In her book, Age Younger, 21 Tips to Make Your 40s Look Like Your 20s, she outlines 21 of her top tips for looking and feeling decades younger. These tips can easily be implemented into your own lifestyle so you too can make your 40s look like your 20s. Go to acradio.live to order your copy today. Hi, I'm Alicia Curry, and you know me from my radio show, Unleash Your Audacious Confidence with Alicia Curry. If you lack confidence and boldness to really go out there and conquer the world, I'm here to share this valuable resource. In my book, Your Signature Style, Unlocking the Confidence, Style, and Influence of the Savvy CEO, I'll take you through a process where you can release your fears and embrace your femininity as a powerful tool to unleash your audacious confidence and win. This is where it all began for me, and I want to share it with you. Get your copy today at acradio.live. Bring out your beauty and confidence from the inside out. Buy this book today at www.acradio.live. The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Hi, I'm Alicia Curry, and I'm here to influence, educate, inspire, and entertain you with audacious confidence. Audacious confidence is the unshakable belief in yourself that's so bold and so daring that you live your life without limits or restrictions. So join me on my show, Unleash Your Audacious Confidence, so we can discover the unknown you. Call in to join the conversation at 888-565-1470. Let's get started. Hey, hey, hey. Happy Monday, everyone. Yes, it's me. Hi. You caught me on social media again. You always catch me when I'm trying to um, get myself together online on um, on Facebook and invite people and get all that together. Well, welcome, everyone. Today is a wonderful day. It's a beautiful day. Um, I'm here at six o'clock. Oh, I know I'm a whole half hour early because um, I'm I'm getting a whole hour today to to do the show, and um, I wanted to spend this first half hour just saying hi to all my friends out there on social media. Yay! Hey everyone, and um, and just share it out on on Facebook and on Periscope and okay and answer any questions that you might have for me because if you if you want to you know find out more about confidence about beauty about image you know give me a call at 888-565-1470 I'm going to be here for the first half hour of the show answering any of your questions looking at you there saying hi to you hi Mandy hi Kessa hi Jeanette hi Edlene who else is there hi Don. Um, all of you watching on Facebook and um, I'm sharing it out. I'm trying to share it out right now on Periscope too. So give me a call. I'm live here and I want to hear from you. I want to hear what's going on. I want to hear what questions you have about confidence or if you want to share a story about confidence and um, how how it's it's affected you either negatively or positively. Like if lack of confidence has affected you, um, I want to hear about it and maybe we can talk about it a little bit and get some tools and some tips to help you break through it. Because 
honestly, uh, a lot of people who don't probably don't know me from years ago would not realize that I had some really big confidence issues. Yes, I did. I had some confidence issues and I talk about it in my book here, um, Your Signature Style. And a lot of those confidence issues were rooted in fear. They were rooted in fear. They were rooted in, in a lot of doubt and uh, worrying about what other people might think, what other people might say about me. And so, hi, hi, Sandra. I'm hearing feedback. So let me make sure everything is muted. Um, so, you know, there are strategies that you can use to get over and overcome a lot of the things um, that you're believing about yourself that may not be the truth. And that's, that's really the first step of, in, in finding your confidence is really realizing what is true. What is the truth about you? I hear a lot of, uh, especially um, parents, talking about their kids if their children don't want to. Oh, thank you, Sandra. If their children don't want to um, talk to someone, say they're in a crowd and they're introducing their kids to someone, they're like, oh, they're just so shy. Well, you know, a child growing up hearing that all the time, I'm just shy, you're just shy, you're just shy, suddenly adopts that mindset and they think, well, I can't speak to people because my whole life I've been told I'm shy. But if you look at that child, that same child in a home environment or in a, in a, on a playground, they're not shy at all. They are outspoken and they're funny and they're outgoing. So you have to be careful about the words that you're implanting into your children because then they grow up believing something that isn't necessarily true. So you might be sitting there thinking to yourself, well, my whole life I've been shy, so I can't, why do I have this around my neck? This is my headphones. <laughs> so my whole life I've been shy, so, um, you know, I don't really talk to people easily and, um, so I can't go out to networking events or I can't do this or I can't do that because I'm shy. Well, that's not necessarily true. And you can change that mindset by first recognizing that it's not true. And the thing is, all of us have the ability to overcome this. All of us have the ability to overcome fear and doubt, even um, low self-esteem and and zero confidence in yourself. We all have the ability. We just don't always have access to the tools to help us overcome those things. So that's why I'm here. I'm here to kind of help you if you feel like you're you're going through something right now and and there's a step that you want to make or you want to break out and, and do something really courageous and do something um, out of the box, but you're afraid of making that, making that uh, leap of faith, you know, you're afraid of doing it and you want a little help, a little help to change your mindset and break through that barrier, give me a call, 888-565-1470. Let's have 1470. Sorry, I, I mumbled my words there. 888-565-1470 so that we can have a chat about it. <laughs> you know, I talk to my son all the time about mumbling his words and I just did it. So, so, um, I know that I have Tony Lassane. He was, what time is it? He was going to give me a call today so we can talk a little bit about confidence and especially confidence in um, video, video and video production because he is a, he makes movies. Yes, call in 888-565-1470. Thank you, Don. Hi, Sebastian. Hi. Hi. Um, so Tony is a, uh, he has a video production company and you're calling in Kessa, yay. He has a video production company and so he does um, a lot of work with documentaries and movies and in film and photography. And he, we were having a conversation earlier today about confidence in women. And he said, you know, that a lot of women, um, that he works with have challenges with either being in front of the camera or doing something um, video wise, even photographs. They have 
issues with. And I understand that very well because I hated taking pictures of myself. I hated being in front of a camera. I hated speaking to a camera. I hated looking into a camera. And um, so I know all about those insecurities. Uh, and because um, when you take a picture, you don't know, you don't like how you look. Everybody's always so hypercritical of themselves. Um, we're always so so harsh on ourselves, especially. And so when, <laughs> when you have to take a photograph instead of just relaxing and releasing it and allowing yourself to enjoy the process, we become very tense and critical and we don't know how to stand and we don't know how to, you know, what to, what to do with our body parts. And of course, your picture does not come out good because now you're tense and you're, you're thinking too much about the outcome, you know, because you're, you're already projecting that it's not going to look good. And so it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So what you have to really do when you're taking photographs, especially, number one, know your angles. Know your angles. Know which side you look best in pictures. You know, understand how to stand in pictures. Um, when you stand straight across, you know, you're, you're going to look wider in pictures. You have to angle your body a little bit. Know how to stand. Know how to be relaxed in front of the camera. Know how to smile a nice, um, a nice... <laughs> I'm seeing all these text messages. Oh, all these messages are popping up on my phone. Um, oh, I'm on. <laughs> I'm trying to answer while I'm on the air. Isn't that crazy? Um, so, yeah, I'm crazy. I'm a little bit crazy here. So what you need to do is really know how to smile a nice, genuine smile so relax and think about something funny. Think about something that you like instead of focusing so much on the camera that's in front of you. So, you know, when you can focus on just being relaxed, enjoying the process, and thinking about something that makes you smile naturally, your pictures will come out so much better. And, and it's the same thing with video. A lot of us get hypercritical on video because, and I'm still hypercritical on video because I don't like the sound of my own voice, which everybody tells me that I'm crazy. But hi, Anne. Hey, Don. Okay. Um, hi. So when you're taking video now, um, Marty. Oh, Marty's calling me. Okay. Um, you want to have a real conversation? Okay, Kat, so we'll have a real conversation. But I have this special caller who's calling in. You know, I said this month I'm focusing on Breast Health Awareness Month. And in the second half hour, I'm going to be interviewing someone with Breast Health Aware for Breast Health Awareness Month. But I have this special caller on the line. And um, you can put him through. His name is Marty. And Marty is a friend, a hu my friend's husband, Julie's husband. And he is a breast cancer survivor. And I really wanted to have him talk about his story because a lot of times when we talk about breast cancer and um, Breast Health Awareness Month, we focus so much on women. But there is a percentage, I believe it's 1% of men that also um, get breast cancer. So I don't want to leave the men out. I want to make sure that I'm representing everybody here today. And so, Marty, are you on? Are you on? I am indeed on. Oh, hi, hi, hi. Thank you so much for calling in. So. Hi, you're very welcome. Um, Marty here, he has a very interesting story about not just how he found found out that he had breast cancer, but, but you know, how, how it all unfolded for him. So, Marty, I would love for you to tell our listeners and our viewers, um, you know, how did you discover you know, how did you discover what you discovered? <laughs> well, how I discovered it was really by accident. Um, I was uh, I was at home one night and just kind of stretching out and just kind of let my arms flop down and 
as I let my arms flop down on top of me, I, uh, I, I felt a little, a little bump that I thought was, uh, you know, it was just a, uh, was just an odd muscle. And, right. You know, so it, it was, felt, uh, it just felt like a you tense, know, right? something tense, a tense lump or something yeah, on your yeah. chest. It was just, you know, like, like I said, you know, almost like a little, you know, non-painful Charlie horse. Uh, but, you know, but again, it was up in my, you know, chest and breast area. And it's mm-hmm. like, well, that's odd. So I tried, you know, sort of massaging it out and, you know, no, it didn't seem to be going anywhere. So, uh, you know, so I asked my wife to, uh, to check it out. And mm-hmm. of, of course, you know, she thought this was some sort of cheap foreplay or something. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, she, she, she kind of, you know, gropes and checks and she's like, mm, no, you, you need to have that looked at. And I was like, well, okay, you know, I'll put it on the list, you know, kind of like most guys do. Yeah, right. okay, whatever. You know, whatever. Hurting, we'll we'll get to it sometime. It. Right. Well, our, our oldest daughter happened to have a doctor's appointment the next day. And my wife says, no, you, you need to go have that checked out, like, now. And uh, she said, you know, since, you know, since our daughter is going in for, the, uh, for a doctor's appointment, you're going to take her. And when you get in there, you need to mention this to the doctor. Mm-hmm. And she gave our daughter instructions and said, hey, if your dad doesn't mention this to the doctor, you need to mention it to the doctor. Right. So was She was your biggest advocate that. right there. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so like I said, I you know took her in, and her appointment real, went real quick, you know. And then I just kind of mentioned mine as an afterthought, and uh, and my doctor said, she's like, well, wait a minute. She went and grabbed the file and came back in, and you know she started checking things out, and, and she said, no, you you need to go across the street to the uh, the hospital here. I'm going to write up an order for you know these wow. scans and go ahead and get this checked out and. You know, do do that tonight. So she she was alarmed enough to think that nope, this needs to be taken care of immediately. Yeah, yeah, it, it was enough that uh, you know that she thought no, we're we're not gonna <laughs> we're not gonna take any chances and right and and you know and let it you know let it ride or anything. We're gonna check it out immediately, which was as it turned out very fortunate for me. Yeah, um, because uh, yeah, I went over there and uh, had you know had these various scans and tests which led, of course, to other scans and tests. And, wow. well, long so story a quick, short is... Yeah, within, a quick w- little w- trip within, to the doctor turned out to be something more intense. Yeah, yeah, w- within, about, uh, within about two weeks of uh, when I went into the doctor, I had, uh, you know, I had, uh, you know, several different tests done, small needle biopsy, large, ne- large needle biopsy, um, and uh, and basically got scheduled for a full mastectomy. Wow! Uh, or you know, on, on the right side, it's like so two weeks from start to finish. And uh, you know, when they when they caught it, they you know they said, yeah, it was the stage. It was only like a stage two A, but uh, you know, but it was fairly aggressive. You know, they from from what they could tell. And, wow! And uh, you know, and they said, yeah, you know, if you if you hadn't caught that, um, you know, you know, could very well have been, you know, two, three, four months that it would have been, you know, kind of beyond uh, beyond health, so to speak. Wow, wow. So, so considering, you know, a lot of times men um, may feel something and just disregard it, um, but it was good that you actually engaged your wife in feeling it you know even though she thought hey come on buddy what's this all about but you know yeah. having having someone else um you know examine it and say well this really doesn't feel right you should have it checked out and not letting you take a pass on it really cuz she didn't let you well, you know say yeah I'll hey, check it out hey. next week or and then next week turns into a month she was very um, right. <clears throat> forceful <laughs> to have you go check it out. Well, yeah, and and again, thankfully so, because you know, because yes, I I would have been one of those that yeah, you know, kind of put it off. It's not right. a major thing; it doesn't hurt, whatever. Especially since and, it didn't uh, hurt; it wasn't painful. Exactly, exactly, and I was just you know, it was just another one of those things. And, right. Then you and thought you could just massage off. it away and it'll just go away. Right. All right. And and I got to say um it's you know it's made me uh you know made made me very <laughs> very aware of uh you your, know your body uh, everything else since then. Right. Yes. 
That, and that's, that's the key, really, is to be aware of things that are going on in your body. And when you feel something that's unusual or you feel something that's, that's, that wasn't there before, um, have the wherewithal to, to have it checked out. You know, don't feel like you're wasting the doctor's time. It's your health. It's your life. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, and, and that's really kind of the kind of the bottom line is, you know, you just need to kind of be, be you know, be aware of, you know, <laughs> of, of your own body. Be aware of your lumps and bumps and bruises and, uh, you know, and, and stay, uh, you know, stay familiar. If, hey, if something seems to be changing, mm-hmm. you know, especially get it, get it checked out because, uh, you know, things can happen far too quickly. Yeah. They can. And like the doctor said, that could have gone downhill pretty fast for you if you hadn't had it checked out when you did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because uh, even just from, you know, even just from uh, when, you know, when I first had it checked to, uh, you know, to when they did the, the full removal and that, um, you know, I, I think they said that, uh, you know, that it grew like, you know, somewhere between a half and a full centimeter. Wow. And, and that was, and just Two the weeks. time that it took for you from the time they saw it to the time that they, they took it out? Yeah, yeah. And that was, like I said, just, just two weeks, you know. Wow. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> again, it, it uh, you know, g- gave, uh, gave pause and, uh, and, and a little dose of reality. So, yeah. uh, you know, I, I don't mind talking to anyone and everyone, uh, you know, given, when I'm given the chance because it's, you know, it, it's worth mentioning and you know absolutely uh, and i'm so thankful that julie when i put that post out on facebook of what i was going to do for uh breast health awareness month that julie you know um pointed it out to me because i i had heard that there was a statistic for men um getting breast cancer but i i had never really met anyone or known anyone that did and so you know i so appreciate you you know, telling your story and and just allowing us to take a pause and and think about that a second because men are not immune from getting it. Yeah, well, and then the reason you don't hear about a lot of them is because much like I was going to do, yeah, you know, they don't pay attention to it until it's too late. Until it's too late, you know, and yeah, and and you know, hey, once uh, well, once you're dead, it's kind of too late to talk. It's kind of too it, late so. to talk about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you taking time off of work, Marty, to give me a call and and share your story with us. I appreciate it oh, so you're much. You're welcome. And you're I hope welcome. you guys yeah, out there uh, also appreciate um, his eye-opening story and that you can check yourself out, men, even though, you know, it's still a 1% chance, still, you know, when you're in the shower, just as us women do once a month, just check feel, see if there's anything, um, anything unusual, anything changing, do it. Yeah, what, like, what do you have like, to lose? Like I said, that this is, this is not one of the 1% that you want to be in. No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> there are many one percenters that you want to be, in, but this is not the 1%. So check yourselves out, make sure that your, um, things are, are feeling okay and nothing's changed and, um, and listen to Marty's warning, you know, take heed it's, it costs you nothing to just check it out. Well, thank you, Marty. Have the, a great right. rest of the Monday. <laughs> Thanks. You too. All right. Take Thanks care. And out. everyone on Facebook is saying thank you too, Marty. So we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be back with my next guest um, in a few minutes. We'll see you soon. Hi, I'm Alicia Curry, and you know me from my radio show, Unleash Your Audacious Confidence with Alicia Curry. If you lack confidence and boldness to really go out there and conquer the world, I'm here to share this valuable resource. In my book, Your Signature Style, Unlocking the Confidence, Style, and Influence of the Savvy CEO, I'll take you through a process where you can release your fears and embrace your femininity as a powerful tool to unleash your audacious confidence and win. This is where it all began for me, and I want to share it with you. Get your copy today at acradio.live. Bring out your beauty and confidence from the inside out. Buy this book today at www.acradio.live. Afraid of needles? Anxious about going under the knife? 
Do the words invasive surgery make you queasy to think about? After years of being mistaken for someone in her 20s, Alicia Curry, a mom of three in her late 40s, finally got tired of hearing, you should write a book about why you look so young. So that's exactly what she did. In her book, Age Younger, 21 Tips to Make Your 40s Look Like Your 20s, she outlines 21 of her top tips for looking and feeling decades younger. These tips can easily be implemented into your own lifestyle so you too can make your 40s look like your 20s. Go to acradio.live to order your copy today. You're listening to Unleash Your Audacious Confidence with Alicia Khoury. Now, let's get back to the show. Hello, hello, we're back. We are back. And thank you for joining us here on Unleash Your Audacious Confidence. I have a full hour today. And we also have, um, I have my guest in studio, but you can still call in. You can still call in at 888-565-1470 if you want to, um, you know, talk about, we're going to shift gears a little bit since Marty called and we, and I am talking about Breast Health Awareness Month. And um, but you can still call in if you if you have a comment, a question for my next guest, then I'm going to introduce her. And I met this young woman. She is a powerful young woman. I met her. uh, Both of us were speaking at a graduation ceremony back in August. Yes, August. August. Both of us were speaking um, to the graduates and I was very inspired by uh, what she had to say and um, I wanted to invite her to come on because, especially because it's uh, Breast Health Awareness Month. And her name, you have to help me pronounce your last name. I'm going to try, but if, Go I'm, for it. if I butcher it, you're going to help me out, right? Yes, <laughs> so, I will. I will. Jamie Disramo. Very close. So the S is silent. Deramo. Deramo. Yes. Okay. I got it close, guys. You know, very I'm close, like, very Wah. close. Most people don't <laughs> get that close. They at don't all. even try. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so she joined the Women's Breast and Heart Initiative as a volunteer in their yes. volunteer department. And she received her Bachelor's of Science in Health Education from the University of Florida and has worked in Miami's nonprofit community for more than three years. For, um, from her experience, Jamie has developed a strong passion for underrepresented and underserved populations yes. and works to promote prevention and heart disease awareness, as well as, re- um, uh, as well as recruit volunteers. You recruit volunteers as well for the cause. So she works with the Women's Breast and Heart Initiative, and it has given her a deeper appreciation for how individuals from all diverse arenas of life someone keeps messaging me on facebook (laughs) stop it (laughs) all arenas of life can unite to provide women the prevention and early detection they need to beat breast cancer and heart disease because breast cancer and heart disease well heart disease is the number one killer the number one killer of women women. one in three women will die from heart disease each year which is about four hundred thousand women and breast cancer is what and in breast cancer, about one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer, which is about 40,000 women. Wow. So those are staggering mm-hmm. numbers, guys. Those they are staggering are. numbers. And so it's really important to take care of yourself. That was like the last segment that we talked about is noticing things about yourself, exactly. taking care of yourself and making sure that you um, don't disregard even little things that you might think, oh, well... Um, you know, that's, that may not matter. Mm -hmm. So Kessa is saying hi, and she said she wants to connect with you about her nonprofit organization as well. So, um, I'll connect the two of you afterwards (laughs) (laughs) with Kessa, but, um, and other people are saying hi to you here on Facebook. So maybe, well, okay, Freddie, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. I know I'm driving you crazy over there, but because he does, I'm reading my phone. (laughs) So. Anyway, uh, I did, before we got into all of that, I did want to, if I didn't mention anything, I wanted to give you an opportunity to say more about yourself, um, where you're from, and, you know, what kinds of, what do you do for the Women's Breast Health and Heart Initiative? Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me on the show. It is an honor. (laughs) This is an audacious woman. (laughs) Um, But yes, so my name is Jamie. And I am actually a Miami native, which is 
apparently very, very surpri- rare it's r- rare people rare yeah. and surprising like people I'll, I'll be at different events and people will be like are you from miami almost already expecting me to say, say no, no. Mm-hmm. And i'll be like yes you know born and raised and they're like really <laughs> and i don't know it, it's it's <laughs> it's always surprising for me but i guess it's more surprising for them for other people I, that you're <laughs> yeah born and raised in miami yes, yes but um I am new with the Women's Breast and Heart Initiative. I've only Mm -hmm. been working with this amazing organization for four months. Um, I started off as a volunteer, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, but um, just going door to door and offering women the opportunity of this amazing resource of getting free mammograms. And people are typically like, free? What's the catch? What's the catch? And then when they are like, And it's not just in October. No, it's not just in October. We actually <laughs> wrapped up an outreach in September, mm-hmm. and now we're doing October. Then our next outreach will be in February. Okay. So, um, but it, you know, I started off as a volunteer, and then I was hired as a volunteer coordinator. So I'm the one who recruits the volunteers, who goes out to the universities and colleges, and so um, it's been pretty incredible seeing not only the volunteer side, but also the women's lives who we change. Like these are real women who are getting real services and whose lives are, you know, are possibly being saved. Because there, there's also, um, you work with a lot of underserved communities yes, and a lot of them don't have options and they don't have access to, to medical care. Exactly. So it's, you are changing lives and you're saving moms, yes. you know, so their kids won't lose their mama early. Yes. And so yes. it's very important work out there that you guys are doing at the Women's Breast and Heart Initiative. Now, is it only in Miami or, or is it a glo- uh, a world, global or nationwide? So we are actually um, in South Florida, Tri-County. We will be serving the city of West Palm Beach in February and in April. Also, we serve Broward County and Miami-Dade. Okay. The hope is, though, is that we can go national that because we realize this is not only a national issue, it's a worldwide issue. Exactly. But, um, you know, little by little. Little, little, by, little by little. So right now it is Tri-County. Yes, okay. Tri-County. Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach. So guys, this is our area that we're, our listenership right now. So, um... What are the early screening recommendations for breast cancer? Excellent. So whenever I speak to students and I speak to corporations, it's very important that we <clears throat> recognize there are various guidelines. But the ones, the ones that we align ourselves with are the American Cancer Society. And so the American Cancer Society believes that it is optional for women starting at age 40 to receive mammograms annually now they recommend that women start at the age of 45 so between the ages of 45 to 54 this is when it is recommended that women get annual annual mammograms okay now from the age starting at the age of 55 it is optional again um it is optional and um however it's recommended every two years okay. and um i i heard you know previously before i got on you know you guys were talking about it's so important that everyone knows how their body normally looks and feels and that's exactly what we tell our women you need to be familiar with how your breasts normally mm-hmm. look and feel. feel don't be afraid to you know say to oh, touch that, it and that feel doesn't, it that yeah. doesn't look right that's yeah if you think that's a mosquito bite? <laughs> How did that mosquito get up under your shirt? Up under, you know? Right, yeah. So it's better to err on the side of caution. caution right. And just, you know, get it checked. Get yeah, it looked at. Absolutely. Because I'm going to get a little personal myself. Because um, I get mammograms every year. Excellent. I get an, an annual mammogram. That's what we want Yeah, I do. And I, I don't only get a mammogram. I get a mammogram and ultrasound. I mm-hmm. have to get an ultrasound as well yeah not only because i have dense tissue Mm -hmm. but i also have cysts and i know where the cysts are yes i know exactly what they feel like good (laughs) i know how many there are (laughs) and so when they show up on a mammogram or they show up on a um, a ultrasound ultrasound. i know exactly and i can tell you know and they're like okay we see this here i'm like yeah i know that one's there and that one's there and and you know so i know where they are and and anytime something changes or i feel something different you know when i go yeah i make an appointment immediately and we go and then it turns out it's just 
just another cyst. And so it's benign and there's nothing to worry about. Exactly. And so you have to know these things. You have to know. Yes. I can tell you exactly where they are. Yes. I can tell yes. you exactly how big they are, yes. how small they are. I know where they are on my on, on at every part of my yeah. breast because yeah. I examine them monthly. And that's what I was I was saying earlier too with men. Men should also Yes. You know, know how touchy your feely. know how touchy your chest feel. normally look and feel. Yes. You know, because you have to really, get a little touchy feely with yourself sometimes. It's, a, it's empowerment. You know, yeah. you have to know your own body. Right. Um, so that you can, you know, I know a lot of, you know, even my own family members, my uncle's a doctor. Right. A physician, and he did not go to a fellow physician to see if he had cancer because he was so afraid uh, that it would have been cancer. And this is a fellow physician, right? And so I think, and um, I think a lot. There's a lot of fear in that word cancer, mm -hmm. but just like Marty said earlier, early detection saved his life. Exactly, early detection. You have to consider early. Don't stick your head in the sand thinking, well, if I don't check it. I won't know and it's not happening. Early detection is what saves lives. Exactly. So you have to continue to get your screenings done. Yes. Feel if something feels different, go Report get it, it checked to your out. Healthcare provider. And it's not it's not a you know, we're not like telling you be afraid, be afraid. Exactly. We're telling you we're empowering you to go and take care of yourself. Exactly. You know, exactly. and not be afraid of the results because if the results turn out like with Marty's situation that it was um cancerous what did he do they got it checked out right exactly. away exactly exactly got it taken care of exactly. and now he's alive to tell a story where if he had waited two months mm -hmm. burying his head in the sand thinking it'll go away it'll go away he would not be here exactly. today exactly exactly so, um it is so vital that you check yourself out Extremely all right vital. um i'm just gonna switch to i know we're talking about breast health but for heart disease because heart disease and uh breast, breast cancer, cancer are the top two killers of women mm -hmm. um, in the world. Yes. And so what are the early screening recommendations for heart disease? Yeah, so this is very important. The Women's Breast and Heart Initiative initially was known as just the Women's Breast Health Initiative. And we added on that heart component in 2013 because we realized this was the number one killer amongst women. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important that women and men know and their numbers, right? your BMI, making sure that you're getting that checked. Yes, even if you don't want to see the number, <laughs> making sure that you're getting that checked at each routine healthcare visit, as well as your blood pressure, right? Mm -hmm. Each routine healthcare visit, visit. Now, cholesterol, they recommend that that be checked every five years and um, blood, glu blood glucose starting at the age of 45. Okay. So it's very important when we're looking at heart disease, know your numbers. Don't be afraid you know, to say, oh, should yeah. I get this checked out? I know my mom you know, had diabetes and it kind of runs in my family. Well, that's I don't, what I was going to ask you. What's the link between diabetes and heart disease? So the heart disease is this umbrella, right? Mm -hmm. And so you have different things falling under that category. So we'll see... Um, heart attack, high blood pressure, sugar, right? Which mm -hmm. is also Di known as diabetes. diabetes. So we'll see this umbrella and we'll see all these things falling under it. And okay. so that's the reason why it's so important to be empowered and know your numbers. Uh, excellent. Well, we're going to take a quick commercial break and we're going to come back with more from Jamie. So stay tuned. Hey. Afraid of needles? Anxious about going under the knife? Do the words invasive surgery make you queasy to think about? After years of being mistaken for someone in her 20s, Alicia Curry, a mom of three in her late 40s, finally got tired of hearing, you should write a book about why you look so young. So that's exactly what she did. In her book, Age Younger, 21 Tips to Make Your 40s Look Like Your 20s, she outlines 21 of her top tips for looking and feeling decades younger. These tips can easily be implemented into your own lifestyle so you too can make your 40s look like your 20s. Go to acradio.live to order your copy today. Hi, I'm Alicia Curry, and you know me from my radio show, Unleash Your Audacious Confidence with Alicia Curry. If you lack confidence and boldness to really go out there and conquer the world, I'm here to share this valuable resource. In my book, Your Signature Style, Unlocking the Confidence, Style, and Influence of the Savvy CEO, 
I'll take you through a process where you can release your fears and embrace your femininity as a powerful tool to unleash your audacious confidence and win. This is where it all began for me, and I want to share it with you. Get your copy today at acradio.live. Bring out your beauty and confidence from the inside out. Buy this book today at www.acradio.live. You're listening to Unleash Your Audacious Confidence with Alicia Curie. Now, let's get back to the show. And we are back. We are back. We're just chatting here yes, during yes, the commercial yes, exciting, break. Exciting. Yeah, so um, I hope you guys are learning a lot and, you know, getting getting a lot of great information. So um, I do want to ask Jamie, what are some of the preventative measures for breast cancer and heart disease? Great question. So there's no really, there's no preventative measure for breast cancer, but there are some things that you can do to reduce your risk. And there are preventative measures definitely for heart disease. So most of these we already know. Yes. Um, and people are like, yeah, yeah, I know this, I know this. But, but they're not very, doing it. Exactly. But typically knowing, we don't listen, do it. Listen, knowing if you're not doing it, you don't know. Exactly. All right? just, just exactly. cut it out. I was listening to a message that says there's a difference between knowing and believing. When you just have knowledge of something, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, I know. I've I heard, should, you I know, mean, you heard that before, exactly. but you don't know it. Exactly. You don't know it until you do it. Exactly. When you do it, then we know you know it. You know, you actually believe it when yes, you're doing when it. When you're doing it. And so um, some of these preventative measures include maintaining a healthy body weight. And that is when we're looking at the BMI. So that, you know, a lot of people are like, mm, don't really like BMI and that's typically because when we're looking at athletes we'll see you know obviously they have a higher BMI yeah, and so that might be a little bit skewed but you know definitely speak with your healthcare provider <clears throat> if you're like well I don't believe that this you know fits for me speak with your healthcare provider and they'll be able to tell and you a nutritionist okay, exactly a nutritionist someone that you can trust that's going to help you be the healthiest you the mm -hmm. best you um, also engaging in physical activity. Yes. Exercise. For, exercise. For some reason, people automatically go to the gym, right? And I get it. I get I it. I am. I'm sorry for all the gym owners out there. I am not a gym person. Right? I, I get it. Like, my fiance, he's like, he loves the gym. He probably is going to own his gym, yeah. his own gym one day. However, you know, most people like the gym or at mm -hmm. least not by themselves so i always tell people do whatever makes you happy if you genuinely enjoy to dance dance, dance. if you genuinely enjoy to go out and walk outside at the park and hang out with friends do that because that's genuinely what you lean towards right and, you and love. it's going to it's going to you're going to be consistent exactly. you're going to be consistent exactly. so like i run but i don't like it but i do <laughs> Oh that's like so it. real. I don't, I don't I, really like I it. I don't like mm, it. I was telling me. a friend the other day, I, I have this circuit that I run <laughs> around my neighborhood. And I my goal is to get halfway there. Yep. And I will complain to myself the whole in halfway head, right? there in my head. I'm going to turn around. But the minute I get halfway there, I have no choice. I'm exactly. halfway. I got to finish it. So the struggle is just getting halfway exactly. there. And exactly. Then, and then I'm once home you, free. Once, once you get halfway free, you're home free I'm because... Like, you got to finish. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Why I'm always turn like, back? When I'm running, I'm like, okay, I'm going to make it to that pole. Once I pass that pole, I can take a break. Once I'm at that pole, I'm like, well, Why I take might a break? Well I might as well keep going. <laughs> exactly. Trick so yourself. You, you, you're right. Exactly. So that's my thing for running. And I people laugh at me when I tell them I only run for six minutes. But I run as fast as I can, as hard as I can for that get six that minutes. Pumping. Get my heart going. And then I'm done. Exactly. I am done. Exactly. I am not going to the Do. gym for an hour. Ain't nobody got time for that. Exactly. So. <laughs> Do something. Move. You know, if you're not moving at all, anything is better than nothing. Exactly. And um, so now for heart disease. Yes. And also... We make we want to make sure people are making healthy food choices. Okay, mm -hmm. so automatically everyone thinks of a salad. Yes, I'm like no 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 <laughs> stop it. Okay, I tell people healthy alternatives because <laughs> then you're like oh okay if you like whoppers you like burgers you can choose a quinoa burger or a bean burger right a healthy or alternative and then no smoking no smoking and limiting your alcohol intake limiting right. because and you know. those tips are actually in this book here Yay. so if you want to get age younger 21 tips to make your 40s look like your 20s some of those tips are right in here so um 
I do have a caller on the line, but I do want to ask you two more questions before I bring Tony on. If you okay. can hold on for me, Tony. Um, how is the Women's Breast and Heart Initiative approach unique? So tell us. Yes. So we like to say we go where no man or woman has gone before. <laughs> you know, that saying. Um, so we actually go door to door. And at first people are like, what? Mm -hmm. You go door to door? That's very strange. Do people open the door? Yes. Right. So we give them this free health educational package that educates them and gives them the wow. tools to beat breast cancer and prevent so heart disease. So your boots on the ground. Exactly. Our boots are on the ground and our volunteers also make appointments on the spot for these women to receive free mammograms and heart, uh, heart screening. So it's truly incredible. It's very unique. And this is the reason why we want to do everything we can to make sure that we are impacting as many women as, as possible. possible. Now, how can people get involved? How can you get involved? Yes. Great question. So this October, we will be serving the city of Cutler Bay. And we go out on Saturdays from 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. So if you are interested in volunteering and you say, Jamie, I can't come out this October, but I would love to learn more and get registered in the future, please contact me at Jamie, J-A-M-I-E, at flbreasthealth.com. Jamie? FL FL Breast Health dot com. com. Jamie at FL Health Breast dot com. Breast <laughs> Health dot com. Breast Health dot com. <laughs> dyslexic right now. Okay. <laughs> so somebody type that in the chat. <laughs> Jamie at FL Breast Health dot com. com. Yes. There you go. So I'm going to ask Tony to Tony. come on the line. Tony, Tony. So, guys, I, I said Tony, I mentioned his name earlier. This is, uh, we were talking about video and confidence and all of that. Hey, Tony, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you loud and clear. So, um, were you listening to the show at all? Yes, I am. You yes, are. Am. Did you hear um, our uh, my conversation with Marty? Definitely. So, what Good are your stuff. thoughts? I think any time that you're you're sharing, um, getting information out that helps people uh, become more aware of how to help themselves uh, health wise, especially this month, you know, it's heightened awareness and it's a great it's a great thing. So Tony is the director of well, he owns a production company. I was saying that he does film, video, uh, documentaries, and photos. And he he is actually the writer and director of the movie that I'm that we're shooting, and people keep asking me, Tony, when is this movie going to be finished? So I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're looking at the fall of next year to to really be ready to to share and and hopefully make people laugh and and a little mad, mad too at the same time. A laugh and a little mad. <laughs> Do you want to tell anybody about the movie? Yeah, it's uh, it's a parody, uh, a, a political parody of uh, the rise uh, and challenges of of two uh, rivals running for mayor of a small town in Florida, two females, and uh, strong women uh, making things happen. But uh, they have different uh ethical personal and professional outlooks <laughs> and, so and you you did a great job on that by the way thank you so jamie here was just talking about um their approach in the women's breast health initiative is boots on the ground they go door to door and um you know get people the the help that they need and i know my in in the movie my competitor my rival um, she has that same approach. Approach. <laughs> she goes door to door and she, you know, engages the people mm -hmm. and has the people uh, on her side. Whereas my character's approach is just, I'm awesome. Vote for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's her. That's, that's her pitch. <laughs> that's my pitch. I'm awesome. Vote for me, right, Tony? <laughs> That's right. Done deal. <laughs> Done deal. It's just, you just need to vote for me because I'm awesome, right? It's <laughs> so, that simple. That's right. It's that simple. So, um, but the door to door approach really does work. It's it does. really um, very effective 
in marketing, in getting people aware and getting them the information. You had some flyers for me, Jamie. Yes, I do. And um, I just want to say because well, of- Let me just say thank you, you Tony, for, for calling in. I really appreciate you. And one Absolutely, one of these days, we'll actually make it. You'll actually make it on the show, so we can talk about stuff. I know, but <laughs> but Jamie's doing a great job. I mean, anytime you're going door to door to bring about that kind of awareness, that's real commitment. So, com congratulations to her, and keep it up. Thank you so much, Tony. I appreciate it. All right, awesome. So yes, so you brought some flyers in. Yes, I brought some flyers in. And I was just saying, because of amazing volunteers, possibly some of the people, you know, even listening have, have gone out to volunteer with us. Um, but because of these amazing volunteers, we have been able to reach 100,000 homes in South Florida Wow! Um, since 2006. So I just really want to say thank you for all of our volunteers who have helped us, you know, reach that. 100,000 and that is going yes, door to door. Yes, door to door, 100,000. Getting women homes. the help that they need. Exactly, exactly. So assistance. you can be a part of helping us reach 100,000 more. Nice. So the, the flyer is... Yes. You too can save a life. So this is for volunteers... Um, in October. In October. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll put this up on... I'll put this up on my page and we'll put this up on... I'll put this up on my website as well. So I'll keep this one so we can... Or you can email, you know yes. what, email me a copy of the yes, flyer so I can I put shall. it up. And um, before our time runs out, I did want to ask you, because we spoke about this just briefly before. Yes. Um, what are some of the, what are some of the resources that you have for women? Yes. Because you have the early screenings, mm -hmm. so you set appointments for them. Do yes. they set, how does that work? Yeah, so... For our targeted door-to-door -door outreach, these ladies will receive free mammograms and heart screenings. So there's no strings attached. Each woman that we knock on her door and she qualifies, she's 40. It, it's not... It's very simple. She's 40 and up and she has not received a mammogram in the last year. We knock on her door. She gets a free mammogram or heart screening and heart screening. And, and um, for those women that we don't knock on their door, there's so many women who's like, my sister lives in Tampa and yeah. you know, my sister, you know, my aunt and all these things. You can give us a call and we will be able to refer you to the service that you, services that you need. And we work really hard to ensure that it's at low to no cost. All right. So whether you have insurance, underinsured, mm -hmm. or you or you have insurance, you don't have insurance, or you're underinsured, um, you can Recovery. you can get covered. You exactly. can get it covered. You can exactly. get it free or exactly. low cost. Exactly, insured or uninsured. And that number, if you you know you have a woman in your life, you're thinking of that woman, and you already know she's forty or over, and she has not had a mammogram within the last year. You can call three zero five eight two five. Four zero eight one three zero five eight two five four zero eight one. Yes, ma'am. Yes, and you can also go to www.flbreasthealth.com and yes. get more information about this women's breast and heart initiative yes. and i am so thankful that you came on the show you drove all the way down from miami well all the way up from <laughs> miami sorry my up and down all the way up from miami to yeah. join me here today i am i i'm telling you this this young woman impressed me when i met her Aww, thank and you, thank um you. the work that she's doing is very important and it's very um very vital for i'm looking at the time make sure that we still yeah yep. that i'm not running out of time for um for women, especially ladies, hearing yes. those statistics, one in three, one in will, three heart, will die from, from heart, heart disease, disease each year. Each That's year, four hundred thousand women one dying each in year. three women each year, and one, one in, in eight, eight will will get be diagnosed be with diagnosed breast with breast 40, cancer. Forty thousand women each year. So, if you're in a room of ten, yeah, do the math. Yes, you know. If it's, you're in the room of 10 people, it's pretty staggering. It's, ta and, and we it's can, staggering. We can prevent this. We can get these numbers lower with prevention and early detection. That's our mantra. Just like you yes. you all were saying, er prevention and early, early detection, detection really is key. Changing so a little bit of your lifestyle, changing a few things in your lifestyle, um, making it so that it's not burdensome for you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a shift in your lifestyle. Consider sticking around for a little bit longer for your kids and, and loved ones, you know. So get those things 
get those things checked out. Um, something about diet. Um, I did want to ask, what was I going to ask you? Like for, for diabetes and heart disease, a lot of those things, diet, just controlling your diet can yes, change. Yes, yes, yes. You know, with type two, especially, especially, um, when we're looking at diet, you know, people are like, well, yes, you can change your diet. And ultimately, and that can change. You that can to, save your life. You know what I mean? And we're not talking about, you know, like major shifts, drastic change. We're talking about, okay, I am Caribbean and I only eat white rice and beans. Going from that to brown rice, mm -hmm. you know, like that's subtle difference. Right. You know, like, <laughs> you know, I'm Caribbean, I'm Haitian. Right. My parents only eat white and rice and, and beans. beans. Um, but you know, even seeing my own mother make that change because, you know, because of her own health yeah. was, um, pretty incredible. So you can do it. You yes. can. Little shifts, little shifts can make a big difference yes. in your life. Having a life sticking around a little bit longer. Yes. Yes. Um, what are some of the really quick before we go, before I get the signal that we're getting, what are some of the signs? Cause I know signs for men and signs for women, uh, are a little bit different of mm -hmm. heart, you know, a heart attack of heart disease yes a heart attack for women especially it's very interesting for women we typically see extreme fatigue mm -hmm. so we see women are like i'm just feel so tired and everyone's like oh mom's just tired right go upstairs and then you know mom goes upstairs and it's a heart attack and mom doesn't right? come back down or are we seeing um shoulder you know, pain shoulder pain extreme back pain so we see that left arm in men a lot and, and some women will will feel that as well but from women especially fatigue back pain shoulder pain okay thank so. you so much jamie thank you all for watching thank you for joining me here on on facebook on periscope on youtube wherever you were watching thank you so much for joining i hope to see you next week i have another great guest coming in and um everyone have a wonderful rest of the week and thank you jamie for being my guest thank you marty for calling in thank you tony for calling in i will join you again next week mwah, 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 mwah. i'll see you again says to me, we have a finite number of minutes to spend. And just like you can only spend $1 once, you can only spend one minute once. It's your choice. So I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for choosing to spend some of your minutes with me on my show. I wish you love, health, and happiness to live your life with audacious confidence. I love you and we'll see you next time. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its hosts, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of the station, its staff, management, or sponsors.